Okay. When the white man made another class of people by giving an educated class and say, you're going to live most to me, near me, you're going to function, and your social decline aside is going to be different. They took you out of society on where you used to be in the zone with all kind of creative shit. So as a result, the creativity start breaking down because you're trying to imitate somebody else. Meanwhile, they got their whole culture trying to imitate your ghetto culture, which is the pathological side. But, so the guy say, the time you're going to have to get into the zone, which means they're trying to get into our old zone because we get ready to go to something totally different. You see what I'm saying? And that's black people actually around the planet. The African motherfucker crazy, the Caribbean. You be like, huh, is there any same place where we can go to black people that's functioning on a high level? Hell no. <laughs> It's all the same. Them niggas is getting into the zone. But we're going to a whole nother level. You see, that's universal. You see. What's that? Mm -hmm. The question is the chronic with Van Diesel. And he gets to be king of the underworld. Okay. Here goes again. Vin Diesel's movie, The Chronicles of Riddick, which started from pitch black, which he was able to see in the dark, and able to, he was actually one of the entities that they was fighting to kill everybody, but only two people escaped the planet of melanin was two black men. Scene ship, the second movie, they, they got the underworld or the underverse ruling, but they got to have a ruler and a leader of the underverse. First of all, it's a richer for the Jews because Vin Diesel's mother is Jewish and his dad is black, so that is Hollywood's answer to somehow try to amalgamate in this super actor, but he's still a nigga. Right. <laughs> See what I'm saying? But Chronicles of Riddick, he, they say a prophecy will come, it will be one that will sit on the throne. And they were saying that even in that, they were telling our story of one sitting on the throne of the underworld. The king of the underworld is Osiris, and later on will be Horus. The underworld is the other dimension, other, other, other hereafter. You see, so that whole movie, he even went into a jail cell and he had to go down to the bottom and work his way back up. That's a, a matter of us working our way back up from the kundalini energy to the crown chakra and the pineal area and all. And so it, it, all that has a lot to do with us. Crematory, which is what hell. Yeah, all of that has a lot to do with us, and that's the kundalini energy. And so, don't, so they, here goes again. If you can't beat them, join them. Put a black man on the throne. You see, the movie Alien vs. Predator, the only thing living at the end was a black woman. Now, hell, we the first thing to die in a damn sci-fi. You know it's a new day <laughs> when the only thing living, they kill all the white people, and the only thing she's standing on the ice by herself. And it was a fight between the black man and the black woman. The alien who have all the babies is the feminine energy, and the black man who was the hunter. But in the end, the goddamn alien won because that movie was set in October the 3rd, the O.J. Simpson verdict, 19, no, 2004. And the other alien you was in the future. So obviously the alien is always the winner because that's the feminine aspect. But the predator is along with her because he ain't dead. But that wasn't up but a family fight between black folks that they tried to get the black woman to quell. It's all rituals. It's all rituals that's going on and all. Yeah, what's that? Mm-hmm. Follow up on how you were saying we don't really pay attention. Right. I remember on uh, I was watching the live footage of 911. Uh huh. And they reported that they found a van on the George Washington Bridge full of white men and explosives. Uh -huh. Thank you. This was like the, you know, like live right. footage. Yeah. The day that the World Trade was hit. Right. And, and we then know. You ain't never heard of them again. And that explosive was just a charge because we know that both of those buildings were imploded. Exactly. Exactly. Impl as a matter of fact, CBS News put what is called a pun. They actually put what is a joke on you. CBS News, you know what they did when they came on that night to announce the World Trade Center pictures? The World Trade Center killings of bombing, they showed four buildings in, my, in Las Vegas being imploded. And then they, after they showed the buildings being imploded, yeah. then they came on saying the World Trade Center was hit. It was all the joke. Let me show you how I knew it was one. 
Supposedly, well, we already know that FEMA moved in the night before to secure the perimeter. Ralph Sherman talks about that. But supposedly, nobody was on the scene because they didn't know it was supposed to get hit. So at first, they showed you these shaky-ass films. A year later on HBO, I said, let me say, some say watch because they had a celebration a year later. I said, and the spirit told me, now, if you see a perfect cinematic widescreen film, it means that the whole idea that they didn't know it was being hit wouldn't have been that way. Nobody would be there that time of the morning taking pictures. And they showed a pristine panoramic shot of a widescreen film of the buildings being imploded. I said, there you go right there. And then, the, and then I turned to the History Channel, and they had the history of the World Trade Centers, which was built by a Japanese. And he said, we designed it to take the hit of a 747. And I do believe that the planes that hit were smaller than a 747. You see what I'm saying? They say, we designed it to get hit by a 747. So this shit was imploded. You see? I used to work in the World Trade Center, and I'm a civil engineer, and I was working there. And I used to work in the World Trade Center on the 65th yeah. floor in Tower One. I was a civil engineer uh -huh. a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And um, if you remember '93, uh -huh. when they had the um, explosion underneath from the vans, yeah. that was where I used to park. Right. They were trying to implode it then. Right. But they didn't go deep enough because they didn't realize how deep. And the they botched the job. Went down into the bedrock. They, now, it's they botched the job. It's yeah. And when I heard that the World Trade Center was hit. I couldn't even watch it because I, just, I told you I used to work there. I knew everybody there. There's no way that only 3,000 people could have been killed there. The elevators themselves could hold 2,000 people at one time, and, and people started coming to work there at 7 o'clock, 6 o'clock in the morning. The, coming up from the, uh, the uh, New Jersey Transit was banks and banks and banks of, ele of escalators carrying hundreds and th thousands of people at a time yeah. up all one direction. Yeah. There's no way that only 3,000 people could have been killed when that, when that came down. Well, it shows but you that what Deborah Blair said that the firefighters from Chicago said. They went there to help, and they got clearance because it was firefighters. They was able to go in there, black firefighters. When they got downstairs, they saw bodies still living, wrapped up in white sheets as far as the eye could see. They were shipping them bodies out. Mm -hmm. They said that the Queen of England got all of that mm -hmm. sacrifice. So the ones that didn't die, they wrapped them up and shipped them out. Okay, also another reason is that if you study physics, for every, act, for every action is an equal and opposite reaction. So when I heard about it, I didn't even want to watch it. I said the buildings are laid all across the harbor down to the Statue of Liberty. That's, that's not, the way they're supposed that's to be. That's what I'm thinking in my mind. I couldn't even bear myself to watch it. I couldn't bear look, myself they to watch showed, it. Look, they showed the same building. They showed a skyscraper fall in damn Asia, and it fell, and it laid damn near a mile down the street. Right. Yeah. Now, these things were imploded perfectly. And, and I want to tell you that this is how perfectly they were imploded, because my father was also, my father was also a demolition, demolition mm -hmm. engineer and could make things fall down exactly in place. Yeah. Uh, I used to work at the American, um, the World Financial Center across the street. Mm -hmm. There's a bridge that crosses the West Side Highway that attaches to the World Trade Center, and I used to come out, out the subway with no coat on and mm -hmm. dash across to work without having to wear a coat. It is exactly seven. This bridge goes across the West Side Highway. highway. It's a pedestrian bridge. It's small. It's fragile. It's severe, uh, sheared exactly where it touched the building, and nothing else of it is, is still standing. And now, that's physically impossible for a building to come down it was haphazardly. All, unless, uh, and so they, and they, they said every, so every, every, and what, what they said, Dick Gregor said that every fire station was called, but there was one right up the street that wasn't called. They, 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 you know, it was all implosion. Now, there's, they say how it is done. It is done from the Hitler thing, problem solution scenario. Right. Hitler burned up the government building called the Reichstag building. It's called the Reichstag complex. It got the people so scared until they voted in National Socialism, Nazi, because they were feared. Germany had this fear that they can hit the government. We got to get some security. And they was, able, he was, and they was able to come to power, and half of his regime was able to come to power by bombing the government building. Well, that's the same thing happened here. It's the right strike complex, problem solution scenario. And the fear now, half the people voted Bush back in, which they ain't telling you this here and all. All the, com anybody, the computers have a damn back door. Now, so they said that every damn uh, place where they had a paper, carry one, and everyone that had the computers, Bush one, because computers have a back door. Don't put nothing that you want personal on some fucking email. The internet 
first of all, look, you are idiots to think that your revolution is going to be by some information superhighway. The internet is developed by the United States military. So anything you put on the internet, they, they can read. Big Brother, that's why they invented this shit, to get all your ideas. Now, try to understand this. Because now, you, know, you can't be like me. I'm protected, because I'm, I'm, I'm dealing with some spirit shit. You understand what I'm saying? That the damn spirits don't want to fuck with. You see what I'm saying? That the spirits don't want to fuck with. So I'm protected. You see what I'm saying? I got the damn devil running from my ass. <laughs> God damn it, if you the devil, motherfucker, I'm new and improved. Where your ass at? <laughs> Why? Because I'm a nigga. You hear the story about the damn God? The, the niggas went to, the, the, the God has some niggas in, 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 in they sent some niggas to hell because they had too much room in heaven. And the damn, they called the devil to tell them about the damn niggas that was coming and shit. And the devil said, hold on one minute. And went back there and said, God damn it, them niggas are out in the fire. They installing air conditioners. <laughs> now don't do like me because you know you're all still good but the point I'm trying to make is this this is very key, very key they arrested Dr. York it was all a setup. Mm -hmm. now Dr. York first was Hebrew no he was Islamic then he became Islamic Hebrew then he became Nubian then he became Egyptian then he became more. Then he became Blackfoot Indian. Then he became Christian. Then he became Mason. What he did, he single-handedly embodied every Afrocentric and conscious and social program that black people are into. And so they were trying to put black consciousness on the terrorist list, but it mean they would have to arrest Every black conscious group, somebody, every black conscious group to do it and put it on the terrorist list. But with the arrest of Dr. York claiming to be all of this in his literature, now every Afrocentric and conscious group is on the terrorist list. Do not call yourself nothing but divine entities. Now they got Moors going to jail left and right all up the East Coast, so-called Moor. Oh, if I tell the wet man I'm more, I'll be sovereign, and the white man going to... You know, this is some ludicrous shit. <laughs> the Moors now are... No, the, the Moors now are number two, number one. The Black Panther Party is number two. On the terrorist bill and all the other incorporation, subversive movements, don't call yourself nothing, and you got to go underground. Like John Henry Clark said, the Japanese was not running their big mouths after they dropped them bombs on them. They went to work and did what they had to do. Quit running your big mouth out here with these motherfucking crackers, Charlie, calling yourself Moors, calling yourself this, calling yourself Hebrew. You ain't none of that shit because all that shit came after you were gods. So you ain't none of that shit, these old isms. You see what I'm saying? And so as a result, now the entire black conscious community Let's say you're part of the Osara Set Society. Because Dr. Yard called himself Egyptian, you are now a part of the terrorist group under the banner of Kemet. Let's say you're part of the Nation of Islam. Because he called himself Islamic, you are now a terrorist. Let's say you say you are more. Because he said so, they only had to arrest one man. You see what I'm saying? One man. And they got the whole gamut. You see what I'm saying? And that's what's going on. He'll never get up out of there. You see? So the mystery here is don't call yourself shit. You don't have to prove to nobody what you are. You are not supposed to be coming the supreme beings. That means that the, the, the ass to the earth is you, so you ain't none of these old bullshit groups because ultimately in the long run you won't be none of this shit because you won't be human. You got to line up with the shit and what they're scared of, but don't line up behind nothing. And anybody that's in groups and incorporating themselves and all that shit, I'm telling you, when the cracker roll on you, don't say shit because you're all under the terrorist bill. It's already been signed, and they got you as the enemy because the whole terrorist thing was about you in the first place. 
They went domestic. They went abroad. The first three, four years, now they domestic coming up. And you, and I'm telling you, you go to that damn airport. I went to Atlanta airport today. That's one of the biggest airports in the country. And that shit, it looked like Beirut. It looked like Lebanon. They got that shit barricaded up. And right now, them white folks is in martial law because we ain't flying. But your airports tell you that Homeland Security being in your airports, that's just securing the airways because that's the first place. But Homeland Security is also in your city. If you look at all your subway systems, you'll look and you'll see notices on Homeland Security. So the point I'm trying to make here is don't call yourself nothing. But gods or entities or the devil. <laughs> now that's one that'll get you free. Motherfucker, I'm damn the prince of darkness. <laughs> now come on with it. <laughs> you see what I'm saying? Come on with it. Because if you line up behind them old deities that you've been, oh, I'm, all this kind of thing, them things don't do nothing but get you killed. The, the, the prisons is full of Christians, Muslims, and all these God-fearing niggas. Because the white man know that you a punk because your concept of that, he gave it to you. And he invented the concept of you lining up behind that shit. What's that, sister? Um, I want, I, I'm acknowledging the fact that on the radio, uh, just in the last couple of days, they were complaining at the airport that they missed their uh, vacations and their, because they couldn't get down to the Bahamas and around because they right. were... They were late coming in, and it was such a process going through. So it's exactly what you're talking about. But the other thing I wanted to mm -hmm. ask you about, what about the night? It came on the news in, in the summer of our, um, uh, 2003 that 19,000 Caucasians had died in our um, France due to uh, heat. Heat wave, yeah. And then uh, later on, the last money came on, actually, because I was saying to my son, that if a 19 and died in France, France is next to... Spain and all that. They had a bunch, they had it's more than that. It was all over Europe. What's right. happening what here is, what's happening here is, we would be having the same heat wave right now if it wasn't for HARP. Let me show you what they did with HARP. These crackers are so bad now, I think they're so crafty, that they waited till the damn hurricanes came and took HARP and went up into Haiti and hit Haiti. There's the regular hurricane that was coming on the west coast of Africa. They went in with heart and put a subsequent hurricane up in there and killed 16,000 of them motherfuckers, or 18,000. And it was, and nobody suspected because it went on during the time of the regular hurricanes was happening. So these crackers can go into a regular hurricane and hit it with heart, and they used the regular hurricanes to mask the destruction of Haiti, which was still. 2004 is still the two year, 200 year anniversary of the whole Haitian Revolution. Yep, yeah, but they hit a lot of the, but even they even tried that because a lot of the islands that did get hit were black islands. That, and here go Florida right up in here, bust out some damn windows. They had some inconvenience, but no 18,000 people died. So this cracker here, you see what I'm saying? He's trying to do all he can do to do it. But what's happening here, the heat wave that was happening, that was supposed to hit here this summer, but they did harp, and they weather modified and, it, and to the point where as, right now, let's say if they was to pack, shut harp down, it would be something like 80-something or 90 degrees right now, today. But they don't want you to know that the shit, the atmosphere has changed on you. You see what I'm saying? Because if the atmosphere changed, the first thing gonna happen with good old black folks, even Christians, you're going to say, oh, shit, it's the end of the world. <laughs> when it get hot, you go, oh, Lord, we don't want to heard about this. So even the basic staunch Christian, you see what I'm saying? Excuse that. Is um, worried about that, uh, you know, will be turned on. So they got to keep this camouflage going. And so that's the reason why the weather, but it's also telling you this. Now, for part of your magical studies, is we want you to go in your mind and try to change the weather every day. It's real simple. We do it all the time. And basically what you do is, and what I do is I go in and I take these black, those beetles that you saw on the mummy, those black scarabs, I run them up into the sky. It's all creative imagination because all the stuff that's happening is inside of here. This is only an illusion. And you, I, I, I put them in the sky and I let them eat up their crowds. 
And as a result, anytime I want sun to shine, if I start the night before, sun's shining. But this is another thing why we know the atmosphere is changing. Um, I had Ginger, which was my, my, my sister for, my, my queen for the seven years, and then she went back to California and was, it wasn't, no, it was a, it wasn't a breakup. She just said, we just said one day, one morning, our time was up, and she, she booked, and all it was all cool. So I went buck wild. So I started going through, I went through, I, well, I didn't go through, I had 13 women. Some of them are at the same damn time. So, but it wasn't the 13 women where I was playing this one and saying, you number one and you number one and nobody knowing. They all knew that this nigga was having fun. So, and then the spirit hooked me back into the sister to go back into, they said, now that period is ending, now you got to go back into the relationship. But they brought me the sister, we own such a, you can know, this is when you know you're vibing, when you think of something and she say it. And that's happening with a lot of y'all now. You will say something, think of something, and your friend, even your family members, everybody say that's because the, 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 the energy is going to one. So we got hooked up, and our energies were so much alike and so in tune alchemically till every time we start bumping and grinding, it start raining. So it got so bad until the damn roof start leaking, and then the hurricane gene came in, and the goddamn ceiling fell in. So we had to stop screwing, because every time we screw, uh, the damn rains and all come. So when she would get wet, it would get wet. So this is also showing you the alchemical tantric aspect of what they talk about when the Shakti power comes back and you start going on another level. That's why there's such a disproportion of black men out of sync with black women in prison or whatever, you know, all, all, all crazy out there smelling of urine or whatever. It's not because of anything else, but they can't let the black man and black woman come together because you are, you are in the beginning. So by you being in the beginning, you would produce the end. So it also means we don't need the masses to do it. All the thing we need is who can do what and hook up with whoever you want to hook up with. Well, that's, it's, well, it's a part of the design. It's just like, and not only that, it's just like um, what I was telling people. Um, Tiger Woods won the, uh, the Masters. Then, they, then the next year, they changed up the golf course. And people don't know, when he won the Masters, they went and got his damn coat off the back of the float and gave that nigga the coat. So then he started, went about a year, then he came back and he started killing everybody and all. Went down to the Masters two years in a row, 2004 and 2003, and they poisoned him both years. And this fucking idiot is so damn dumb. He, he went down to the Masters in 2003, ate a sandwich that they fed him out of the commissary or whatever that is, got sick, and couldn't win the Masters. Went down, a, this nigga so dumb, he went down again the next year, and they fed him some food again, and he started throwing up. They tried to poison the nigga both years in a row. But they was working on him, and they said, well, look, we got the ultimate deal for him, giving that white woman. That's right. And he ain't been able to win nothing because he don't understand that this cross-pollinization of a species is cutting his energy. And they did the same thing to them Venus girls, to give them white boys. And them motherfuckers ain't winning shit because they don't understand. You got different levels of energy frequencies and stuff, especially these doggone hybrids. And they gave them them white girls, and now none of them niggas is winning shit. You see, secret weapon, work every damn time. <laughs> work every time. Gave them them doggone white women and white men and bringing them down. They know what to do because it cuts the energy. Give me some questions, right? Yeah, what's that? Have you heard about the two sets of uh, footprints that they found um, side by side in Europe? They said one may have come from, one, one set may have come from Kemet. Mm. Have you heard about that one? You know what? Uh, these days, the ship is still out on what these crackers are talking about. These crackers come on Nova. And they said that they created the Asians. That the Asians came from white folks. You can't believe nothing these crackers say 
in their science. They're trying to, they got a whole book on the Egyptian origin, the origin of, the British origin, the Egyptian origin of Britain. The, Brit the British came from fucking Kemet. I don't believe nothing these crackers say. They came in and said that the Asians was, 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 came from white folks. Okay, then they came back another day and then they, they and tried to do another shit and prove that the two cradle theory was a joke. They went into Siberia and they went on up into the North Pole almost and found a group of darker people, Asian looking people living in the ice. And they really did that. The thing about it here is, I want to ask this question. How could these people living in sub-zero weather don't get rid of their dark hair and their melanin. But yet Europe, which is a lot warmer than has seasons, because it's hot over there in the summer, get blue eyes and blonde hair. They, have, they, went in, they found the origin of what they're supposed to be mutated from, and they were still black. And yet these white folks supposed to be created. They say, then they say they came from the Asians. Then they say that these black people from Siberia went and got stuck in Alaska for 500 years and then came on into America and made the Native Americans, but the Native Americans were your color right. in 1901. Yep. So how the hell are you going to get an Asian to come in and make a damn Native American and they lighter than the damn Native Americans? They lying their ass off. You can't believe none of that shit them crackers are saying. You can't get nothing off the boob tube or nothing when it comes to this kind of scholarship, because they making history every day. It's like the Ramesses tomb. They found that shit in 19, uh, 10 years ago, uh, 11 years ago, they found the Ramesses family. And like they said, they ain't opening up because they said they're over there painting and painting the walls until they're going to look like the Beatles when they goddamn go up in there. <laughs> Don't look like damn Leonard Skinner or something. You see. So they just lie. You can't go by nothing these crackers say. They fabricate and falsify history and just lie. Give me some questions. What's that, sister? Are you familiar with um, David Icke? Yeah, I'm familiar with David Icke. Okay, and um, Sean David Morton, he's a futurist. Uh, yeah, I heard of him too, yeah. Okay, I'd like to know um, if you would be kind enough to give us some information about the importance of us not being fearful and how these other people feed off of the... Okay, well, let me give you some thing on, on, on one thing about the David Icke thing. David Icke puts out information on the Illuminati. It's real good information. But he do that by the Illuminati because you never know who they are, only to train you against yourself by turning against the reptilians. The reptilian is means it just means the original Kundalini race, the Uraeus people of Egypt, the serpent people. You see, every culture of our culture got the snake as being the illumination. They call the Nagars in 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 uh, in in, in um, India as well as in Asia, the Uraeus in Kemet, even Vishnu got. Thousand serpents on his head. That is, and it means the people, who, that, so it's a code word to the people who have the complete access to the kundalini energy. So the reptilian he's talking about is us. That's the first thing. Now, as far as fear is concerned, yeah, they feed off fear, but fear is the basis of, like I said, the reason why we still are bound to this religion because we're scared of going to hell. So fear is been a has been a component for mind control and world domination. But they're also doing the fear also when it comes to this whole new world, all the stuff. Now, what I'm trying to tell you is this about all the stuff with Homeland Security. The only reason why they're moving like that is because they have to, because they know that their time is up. What I'm trying to say here is whenever they jump, it's over. Because that, so they can't jump openly because the simple fact here is it'll wake up too many black folks. But what I'm trying to tell you here is whenever they feel they got to do it is because they going to go in there one day and they going to shoot their little pistols and they ain't going to work. And they going to do some bluff shit. They might be out there, got you on lockdown and the bullets won't even fire. And a baby can come out there. And, you, and once the guns don't fight, we black men can be like the male lion. The male lion don't do shit but sit on his ass and the woman go out and do everything. That's right. 
We'll send the sisters out there to kick his ass. <laughs> we won't have to do nothing. I know a bunch of black women, if they didn't have no guns and bombs, we wouldn't have to damn move a muscle. <laughs> That's some messed up stuff, though. Now, I'm just joking, but seriously, though, we can send you. Now, you got this, and this nigga here crazy. But I'm trying to tell you, I know some black women that will kick ass and take names, because I done got beat down by some of them when I was young, when I was in damn junior high school and elementary. We could send Coot Campbell out there. That motherfucker used to hit her. I seen Coot hit a girl in the eye and black. She hit a girl in one eye and both eyes was black. We got some sisters that can whip some ass. You know what I'm saying? And can whip, if they pull off them earrings, it's over. You see what I'm saying? So they, they know that their time is up and ain't nothing they can do now because those Native American spirits when they came, they hit the East Coast. Remember, go back, there was two days before Thanksgiving, the winds was going crazy. And I said, what? That was their Yakaifa, Zimri, Bozeman, Fle Fleeman, and those particular ones. They hit the West Coast because they was mad at this dog on holiday and they showed their energy. It was going crazy. What's that, brother? That information on Enoch, Egyptian, I mean Ethiopian, it's coming out more now. Uh-huh. Uh, what is the relevance to that Ascended Master and all? Uh, Enoch, um, Enoch is nothing but Tahuti. And the keys of Enoch is nothing but the central nervous system and the DNA inside of you. Um, in, 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 inside, inside of you. Um, they attribute the Elijah, Enoch and all, and they, and they say take it up into a whirlwind, and it could have very well been some, a person that ascended into the astral planes onto the seventh heaven that they call it and stuff like that. But ultimately, the keys that they're talking about in the book is the central nervous system of black people. You see what I'm saying? And the whole thing. So it's all legitimate to read uh, the keys of Enoch by, um, not the keys of, but, but the, the, to get the, uh, R.H. Charles book of Enoch, the, uh, a book of Enoch and stuff like that also to get, get to, to, to deal with some of that type of information. It's key to deal with some of that too, you know. Give me some questions. I would mm -hmm. like to get the information on the, uh, sickle cell anemia experiment if it's still available. Uh... Um, I don't think it is because they shot it down. But what you can do is, is you can inquire. Go on, search the internet and see what they can see what you can do. You, it, you might be able to find something on the internet of somebody who's still dealing with it. But in actuality, all you really got to do is um, eat African fruits. Now you can go to any farmer's market and they got international farmers markets and stuff. You can go to any farmers market and just go and buy up a bunch of stuff that different indigenous groups have. And basically you can, you can do it that way. You see what I'm saying? Oh, you can get that damn um, Windsor Canadian whiskey and some um, Windsor Canadian whiskey and some Gardens London Dry Gin and hook it up and, and, and call on old teacher T.H. Shayola and Al Collar and they can go in your central nervous system and heal that shit for you or do what they got to do. There's other magical ways of doing it. But the diet is, is, is basically, um, and I know that works like hell. That worked like crazy. You know, I took, I had some hot grease drop, drop on this damn hand, and it was so, I was so surprised that it stayed on there a minute. And I said, y'all motherfuckers get on it. And my shit didn't even damn swell up or nothing. So I know the spirits can do what they can do. I spit some of that licks on it and drunk some, it was over. It, it, it was over. So you can, you can also, you can do that also um, on that particular level. Um, get, but just go and get some of the yams, because all they did was took African fruits and put them together and made a serum. So you can do that yourself. A Quaker and Dow, yeah, out of, um, he lives in Atlanta now, Quaker and Dow. Um, yeah, he lives in... You know, yeah, and stuff, yeah, he, he's an uh, eth ethnobiologist, a uh, botanist, whatever he calls himself. And so, um, 
he he uh, he has a book out on um, on some of that. But a lot of this stuff here you can do yourself. We be running the experts, and the experts says I sell. Let me give you an example. Um, I go in the kitchen. I go to I I go to the East Indian restaurant and eat that shit one time, and go in the kitchen and cook that shit, and it be better than theirs. I do it from the spirit realm. I do it from my damn taste buds. And I don't know how I do that shit. But something about when I get in there and hit them pots and pans, it's just like a nigga playing that music, and it, it's all inside. So I go to there, and I taste it one time. I say, I can get it. Anything I go to the restaurant and eat, and it's good, I say, I can do it. And all I do is go inside, and I don't know how I do this shit. I've only been cooking a little over 10 years. And I'm telling you, my shit now, it's done tried on everybody in Atlanta. They be like, your shit is like restaurant style. It's high cuisine, and I don't know how I do it. It's coming from with inside. All I know is I get up in there, and the spirit just tells me what to do. And I duplicate it, and then I go, make it better. And I make the shit better. Make it better. It's a damn treat. And I done tested it out on everybody. One brother, that's all he do is go to restaurants and try different things. He said, man, I done been all over this country. He said, I ain't never taste no shit like this. What's the ingredients? I said, I couldn't tell you if I got damn, if it fell on me. So I'm just trying to say, oh, it's about, oh, you got to change it. Oh, you got to go? Well, you know, it's all good. So we, uh, how, how much, how much time is it? 120, golly. Oh. Well, well get, get this brother here, then we're going, yeah, what's that? Partially answered one of the questions about why so many black men in, in prison and now more black women are going to prison. Uh, mm -hmm. Here in Philadelphia, we have this Jew uh, woman, a district attorney, and she years ago made a statement that black men have a propensity for crime. And she just... Prison, and you know what's happening? When I was in Texas, they done locked up so many black men in Texas until it was known, they said, we're going to have to start putting the black woman, because, you know, it's industry. They make everything on the planet, they make it in prison. And so now it's all across the United States, too, that there's a rise in crime of black women going to prison. And to let you know that they... They always put stuff in a movie to get you ready for it. So they made a movie called A Civil Brand. It was about black women in prison. And that's to indoctrinate your mind to get used to the black woman is going to prison. And they do it. It's just like the, the, the movie The Wire. Everybody who, there's a, a show called The Wire come on HBO. And everybody who can't get an acting job, they can go on that show and be promised that they can have some episodes on The Wire. The reason why is, is they got to have the, 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 they got to have the wire. It's not for America. They got to show the dope trade, which is almost very low now, the dope scene in America. But they got to keep it up that this hotbed of all this gang activity and dope war around the world, because HBO is satelliting this around the world. And the, and the, and the people who broadcast it is out of, although it's Time Warner, the, the people who broadcast it around the earth is Britain. And so they got to keep certain derogatory shows on there. So it was ours for, for seven years or eight years. Now it's The Wire. And that's to show those things in Nigeria, Kenya, Asia, and all over. Because they made up in their mind when it came to black folks. After Marcus Garvey had his international movement, they made up in their minds that never again will they have something that will bring all Africans together. And they've been working at it ever since they deported Marcus Garvey. So, and they, they beefed up the propaganda. So that propaganda of the wire and all that is to keep us at a subhuman level so that we can never link up. And they show those things and they, they, they teach them all this propaganda over there. As a matter of fact, one brother just got back from Ghana and he says the, the Caribbeans can go over and they, they, they take them and they embrace them. But the blacks, although they, 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 they deal with them, they call them white man. Huh? Obroni. Obroni, white man. They call them white. Obroni, white. But the Caribbeans can go over because they still have a language, language, although they might speak British or whatever, 
they got a linguistic barrier that's still there. You can still see, the, you can still hear the African in the in the Caribbean. So and, and so basically, with that and, and and certain alliances, they embrace them. You see what I'm saying? So they have African Caribbean, uh, uh, African Caribbean student unions all in all major colleges now, and the blacks are over here. So that's the government still putting this, this thing that we can't ever come together and stuff like What's that? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Let's go. Yeah. Hi. What's that? What's that, sister? Uh-huh. Yeah. And these things are still for sale, y'all want. And y'all can also add to the Hemet Love Fund also, too. I, I beg now, because, hell, I worked for fucking 13 years for chicken feed. <laughs> I, I wanted to know, yeah. how, how long have you been um, communicating with the spirits? Uh, I've been doing it since I've been conscious. And I realized that was all my life, but basically, it was a gradual elevation on the spirit realm for the last 10 years, but as far as being within the underworld and a direct relationship with them, the breakthroughs came in on the millennium, 2001. So now, it's a direct relationship with them and stuff. It's almost like um, there's no difference between us. There's, there's, there's no difference between us and stuff like that. Now, it's a direct relationship, you see. Um, you know, and so it's, it's, so I, so in 2001, the, the breakthroughs, when the names started coming with new names, then I knew then that I was dealing with a personal entry into the underworld and into the spirit world because the names was coming uh, with, with whole new names and not the generic names. And I knew then that these were breakthroughs and they still come and stuff. There was one that came last Saturday, and what it is, it's always sisters. I hooked up with a sister out in California, sister named Ella, and they started coming. And she's the one that got the, the four Native Americans ones. But, but, but she, she came with one so deadly, it was called complete, it was called absolute destruction. And she gave the name. So I was getting ready to go in there and to pull libation to it, and the shit got lost. It, actually, we put it in this, put it in the bucket and made sure we put it a certain place. And so the, the Lakshmi came in and took it and hid it, and we couldn't find it. So I had to call Ella back to get the name. And then my, th 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 then my queen, they channel her, they say, don't call that name up in, in libations. You're getting ready to burn up some stuff and mess up your house or whatever. <laughs> so they, they hid it for a minute before I called libation. Then I found it that the next day. So I'm saying, it's a spirit world. You see, it's a spirit world. Let me give you an example of how the spirit world works. I got all this Lakshmi all in the gold and stuff. So, the sister Kennedy called me and says, Erzuli feels neglected. You need to put something pink on Lakshmi's altar. Now, they're all a form of the same Venus because Erzuli is the voodoo Venus. The goddess of love, and you see the same heart chakra in it. So, my queen said, no, nah, Lakshmi is saying, hell no, don't put no shit on her altar. Although it's the same energy, it's this different thing, but they got certain frequencies. So about a week passed. We up in the up in the in the room and I'm jamming all this music. So I pull out this Donna Summer album. You know. And I put and it's the greatest hits album, because I got this, I got two thousand, maybe three thousand albums. I got a whole room with nothing but LPs and stuff. So I pull out this album, and this poster falls out, and Donna Son is sitting on this big wooden radio, and she got on pink shoes, and they got a pink background with some blue and pink background, and they got her name written in pink, Love Donna. So I'm getting ready to put it behind the door, put it up on the wall behind the door, I got a little music room. And she said, hell no, put this thing on the, over on the wall. She told my girl that. So I'm thinking, is this Donna spirit? Because, you know, you could talk to people's spirit, although that person physically could be dead. Their spirit is in another dimension and all. And so you could talk to I thought it was one of them things. So I put the, the, up on the wall, and I said, oh, my God, I got this big disco ball with all these colored lights. And some of the lights was the same, the same colors in the poster was the same colors in the lights. 
So that, that about two hours later, the sister Kimberly calls, who was one of my psychics. She called and I said, was that Donna Summer? She said, no, I'm getting more Azuli. So Azuli came up in there with a Donna Summer poster and the disco ball. She said, I'm going to get up in this motherfucker some kind of way. So then I had to go and put up pink babies with her. Then I said, and I said, I said, oh, is that all right? She was like, oh, then she was acting a little sassy, like, you know, you neglected me, but okay, I'm back now. So that's the kind of communication. That's the, that's the, kind, that's the kind of communication. You know, you see what I'm saying? And, and also, these, these are how these, these, these types of things happen in that particular spirit world, uh, in that particular spirit world like that. So it's some amazing things that's going on, uh, you know. Now, it's like the sister, um, the sister Fanny, say she took the mushroom and she went up and said she, our set came. And she said, well, I tried to call on you a couple of months ago. Last time I did something, she said something. She said, I never could really get in touch with you. She said, because um, I don't know who ISIS is. I don't answer by that. I answer by our set. So it's just interesting how that whole thing, how that whole scenario went down. Yeah, give me some questions. Yeah, what's that? Uh-huh. If you're not used or say, for instance, you, are, you don't know how to be in tune to, you know, spiritually or listen. I mean, it's hard for me to explain. Yeah. How do you get back in tune to listening to your inner voice and things like that, you know, spiritual stuff like that? Start with this. Start with something as basic as ideas. What I mean by that is this. Every now and then you'll have an idea. You have it a lot. And it'd be some genius stuff, but you just can't have the confidence in it because something because it's, it's never been said before and you can't find nobody outside of you to validate it. Don't throw it away. That right there is the beginning of the channels and stuff. It comes through you, but we don't have enough confidence to think that our stuff is legitimate. And you think your head is doing crazy stuff, and it's not. It's not doing crazy stuff. You see what I'm saying? Let me give you an example. I used to get under the music back in 88, and I used to see me and a woman riding on Pegasus. That's the white horse with the white wings. And we was riding in this mountain, and all these people was there waiting on us, and we was riding in this mountain. Come to find out Pegasus is a form of the Christ energy and the pineal gland and all this kind of thing. You see what I'm saying? So there's visions that come all the time. And I was thinking that I was thinking it up in my head, but these was actually visions or stuff. It's like one sister had a vision. She was going to see Farrakhan. This was in 1991. She was going to see Farrakhan. When she got to the place, it was me speaking. And this was one year before I started speaking. You see what I'm saying? I started speaking uh, the L.A. riots, 2000, 1992, is the first time I opened for Steve Coakley. And then after that, I, I, I did my lecture in June of 2002. She had the, the uh, dream or uh, vision a year before. So my point here is start with your ideas. They come to you all the time. You just don't have confidence in them. And then from that, it will go to another level. Right. It just seems like that's, you know, that's, you have a lot of fear and you hate to. Right. Yeah. We have the fear. Give in to it. Let it, let it consume you. The first thing you do is, is you gather up, start reading any stories and stuff on death. Get Anne Rice Vampire Encyclopedia and fall in love with death. Any stories in any books, there's a book called Through the Gates of Death by Dion Fortune. Get that book. Through the Gates of Death by Dion Fortune and try to learn all you can on death till you fall in love with death. You want to fall in love with death to the point that you want to be on the other side and you really don't want to be in this world. And once you conquer that death, then everything is pretty much easy. You will get rid of your fears because you don't have a fear of dying. 
You see what I'm saying? Or dying. You know, it's like my brother got in a damn car wreck and had a damn headache and went to sleep and got mad the next morning when he woke up. Like, God damn it, I was almost out of this bitch. So you got to be that way. You got to fall in. You got to conquer the fear of death. And you do this by learning as much as you can on death. Here's a good book. This book is called Voodoo Visions by Sally Ann Glassman. Voodoo Visions. V-O-D-O-U, Visions, by Sally Ann Glassman. This is the same person who wrote um, the New Orleans Voodoo Tarot deck. Get that deck. But there's a lot of stuff on death, and you'll find out that death and sex got a connection. Because when you have an orgasm, you're actually feeling the other side for spasms of seconds. That's what the other side, that's why I was ready to get to the other side. Just to have a damn 30-year orgasm that don't stop. I can dig some shit like that for a minute. But get this book here and read all on anything on the dead. Voodoo Visions by Sally Ann Glassman. G-L-A-S-S-M-A-N. You see. Get this particular book here. Uh, get this book here also. A Goddess is a Girl's Best Friend by Laurie... Sue Brockway, B-R-O-C-K-W-A-Y, B-R-O-C-K-W-A-Y, Laurie Ann Brockway. Get this book because they, they drop on Latch Me up in here and a lot of other guys. This is an excellent one. But they bring her into the modern world and let you see how this goes on with everyday life. Some good books, you see. Um, get some good, what's that, uh-huh? You mentioned something about the Tree of Life, but I yeah. got it, and um, uh, that you, it was on the wall. So yeah, the here's the picture right here. Um, it's, on the, it's on the temple walls of Komombo, and I also found it at Dendera. I found it at Dendera uh, two summers ago. Um, it's at the temple walls of Komombo. I, I would have uh, hooked up the, uh, what you call it, to show it to you. Um, the, uh, I would have hooked up the, uh, yeah, but this is the temple walls of Komombo, and this is the, Pharaoh holding up the Kabbalah. Part of this is, is missing, but it is the, it's, it's the spears. The, or the tree of life. The other one, there's a, a complete one on the side of the temple, one of the sides of the temple of Dendera. And I found uh, uh, 2002. It's on the side of the temple of Dendera, a complete one on this, on this side of the building. Outside? On the outside of the building. Uh, on the outside of the building. I just have to go back in and uh, go back in and find it by taking certain photographs. But I, I found a smaller, smaller photograph with it on there. But if you look in the Book of the Dead, they say the gods that set up on the ladder. See, it's called the Tree of Life, but it was also called the Ladder of Lights. So they'll tell you about the gods that set upon the ladder in the Book of Coming Forth by Day. It's the same thing. It's also the Dejed Pillar. What? The Book of the Dead. Budge, in, uh, either anyone, and they talk about the gods that set upon the ladder. Under the Jed Pillar, the backbone of Osiris, which is called, it's not called the Jed Pillar, it's called the Shed Pillar. The back of your, if you take your skin off, the back of your, 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 your back is blood vessels. And the Kundalini energy rises up the blood vessels, part the Red Sea, which is the blood vessels, on into the pineal gland, the promised land. It's all metaphysical. There's never no motherfuckers in no Egypt. That's all fake. Abraham never existed. I was all about, all those, those are, those are astronomical, astrological, allegorical, and metaphysical stories of stuff that's on the inside of you. If you go to Abraham and go to damn, go to uh, India and look up the word Brahma, and de-scramble it, and you get Abraham. Abraham comes from Brahma. And also Brahma, you take the B and make a, it's all Amin-Ra, Abraham. It's all uh, Abra, it's all terminologies and stuff. And you're thinking it's some patriarch and some that old shit. And it's, that's, uh, that's where you get thrown off. Grotesque, sublime mythology makes grotesque history. So... Um, the blood vessels split up the blood vessels. The kundalini rises up the blood vessels up the Jed pillar, which is the backbone of the spinal column, into the pineal pituitary third eye the whole nine yards. But that's called the shed pillar. Jesus shed his blood. The jet pillar, shed pillar. 
The shedding of the blood is the jet pillar. But you, it's called shed pillar. So the shedding of the blood is the kundalini shedding up the blood system, the back of your, the, the, the Red Sea part in the Red Sea with the staff of Tehudi, the staff of Moses, it's all metaphysical. You see what I'm saying? It's all metaphysical and it has nothing to do with no people coming out of Egypt and stuff it was, uh, in some bondage. There was never no slavery in no Egypt or no Kemet and all. But this is, this is, this is the discabalistic thing here. This is the, uh, this is one at the Comombo. There's one at, um, also in, um, Dendera. It's also one, one, one in, one in Dendera. Um, the white boys even tell you they, their first Kabbalistic knowledge comes from Moses de Leon in Spain. This was nothing but some Moorish doctrines that was brought up into Spain. You know, y'all got some water somewhere? I think I still got some of this power shit up in here. This is good. <laughs> um, yeah. You know, yeah. But anyway, give me some questions. Mm hmm Yes, sister. My daughter died um, a couple a couple of years ago. Uh huh. And she died. She immediately came back to me. Uh -huh. I mean, within like hours. Mm -hmm. It was very comforting. Mm -hmm. um, the night before she died, she shared. She didn't even share the experience with me. She just said it was totally awesome. She couldn't really share it with me because it was just too much to share. Uh huh. But anyway, to make a long story short. Oh, I um, guess yeah. And my communication with. Huh? On the spirit level, I asked her to show me, you know, where, where, where she was and what that was. Uh -huh. um, and she showed me, and it was as if, you know, I just kind of went there with her. It was, a, it was like a heavenly experience. Uh -huh. And so it was like I just went to heaven. Right. And I was like really down for like two weeks, you know, just having to be here. And knowing where she is and knowing well, look, what an awesome experience that was. Right. So look at here. For the mere fact that you could go where she was means that she got to be on the inside of you. Okay. It's inside of you. That's where she is. Okay. You see, you just bear witness to it. Glory be to God. <laughs> Hallelujah. You just bear witness to it. It's inside of you. Okay. So she is with me. She's with you. Okay. You, you only went inside. Heaven is within. Okay. And the only reason why she can communicate with you on that because she's now a part of you. Okay. She's in the DNA or she's riding up the Black River Stikes, which is this melanin complex of a river Stikes, which is a riverway inside of the human body. Wow. That's exactly what it felt like because when she died, it felt like I was pregnant all over again. Exactly. Because she's inside of you. Okay. She's, she's, she's inside of you. The Black River Stikes is a river that runs through the underworld. The underworld is the inner world. Uh -huh. And she's riding in that river inside of the microscopic organism of your genetic DNA makeup. That's one of her homes is the cells. You see? Wow. You see, so it's, it's got something to do with that. Okay. Uh -huh. where, where would I find uh, readings on that? Readings on that? There's a book called Demons of the In Inner World. I don't want to deal with a demon now. No, you don't understand what demons are. Demons are called Damien's, Amien's, Almond's, Hidden Substance. Okay. What you call demon is a, is, a, is, a, is a degraded word by the Christians that meant something totally different in the ancient world. Demon means one's own genius. Demon, Damien, Amen, Almond, Hidden Substance. Okay. So demons of the in underworld, inner world, that's why they make these books. They know that you're going to have that reaction. Oh. So that's why they would name it that other than saying hidden substance in the, in, uh, in the world to keep you out of it. Wow. But in there they talk about uh, uh, dead persons in one's head. And um, in one's head, no. But get the cartoon movie Osmosis Jones. Where it's talking about a whole civilization inside of this man's body. Osmosis Jones, just to get the concept. It's a film? Yeah, it's a movie. It came out about 2001. Osmosis Jones, Bill okay. Murray. Okay, thank you. Osmosis Jones, it's just to show you that of what it is like. Uh, get the uh, what's the name of that movie? In a, with the one where um, uh, De Dennis Quaid is trapped inside somebody's body. What's the name of that movie? Uh, 
Dennis Quaid and I can't think of the other guy's name. Uh, inner, inner space, inner space, inner space, get that. Same science. Give me some more questions. Give me some more questions. Uh-huh. Yeah, what's that, sister? Left eye, left eye, uh, well, certain things happen. She was, well, two stories, I'll give you both. She was um, going to introduce the entire music world to Dr. Sabi, because she was with Dr. Sabi, and Dr. Sabi had made her lose a lot of weight and all this kind of thing here. Thank you, you're so kind. Mm -hmm. mm. Thank you. Yeah. So, you know, um, so she was going to introduce a, a music world, so they was already, um, they said that they, that it's possibility that, they, that, that they, when she went down to Honduras, they took her out that way. The other story what we got is she went down there and she accidentally ran over some boy down there, killed this little boy, black boy in Honduras, accidentally hit him, and the family put some mojo on her ass, and that's why everybody in the car lived and she died. Now that's another story that went down. Um, so it's a couple of things. So you can take which one, but I do know that uh, she was with Sabi. That's why she was down there. And she, her and Andre Risen was going to build him a laboratory with some money. And she was getting Hollywood to come up and he was going to be their own personal guru and stuff. You know, because he went down to Michael Jackson last year, or the first part of this year, to get Michael Jackson well. Because they said that he was so sick until he wouldn't be able to make it past this trial. So Jermaine, you know, who's conscious, he's been with the nation secretively for years, took, got in touch with Sabian. Sabian went down there and stayed a couple of months in the house with Michael Jackson. And should I say, you fuck around and Michael Jackson slip your ass some love juice, <laughs> you be goddamn crippled. Some Jesus juice and shit, fucking around with Michael Jackson horny ass. But... <laughs> <laughs> you be down there, uh, body, you, you, your body can't move, you be trying to holler and you can't holler and Michael Jackson be getting naked and shit on your ass. But anyway, he went down there to help Michael Jackson. <laughs> he went down there to help Michael Jackson and stuff, you know, um, you know, uh, get well and stuff like that. So he starstruck on this thing with these people here and all, you know. Uh, no, but they said Mike was going to give him a million bucks, too. So I think I would have had to pull up on Mike's house and stuff with my little, my little uh, 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 ice pick just in case that nigga want to get funny and stab his ass. You know, you know. You got a white boy. Huh? You got a little white boy. Who? Oh, but I'm not, oh, you're right. It's the same thing with Luther. Luther wouldn't fuck nothing but German white males. He would import them in. That's all he would fuck. He had a German... White male is the only motherfucker he would fucking, he would import them in. As a matter of fact, they say they got him saying, he's singing on stage and he got this coat on and it's got these Nazi like German like symbols and stuff on the coat. And that's all he would fuck is them German white males and stuff like that. So, you know, um, you know, I don't know what happened and shit, you know, but, uh, you know, all kind of crazy stuff. But that's all he was, he, he, he got so rich, he'd import his, Nordic crackers in of the master race. Yeah. New movie coming out it's called um, Constantine. I saw yeah, Constantine with um, yes, yeah. It's gonna be the I'm gonna see what's gonna happen with it. Yeah, Constantine with um your boy Neil um. Now you know your girl won her case. The the what's the Stewart? Sophia Stewart. Mar no, not Martha Stewart. So the girl that wrote the Matrix. Sophia Stewart, the one who, the black woman, she won a case the week before, the week before Christmas, two weeks before Christmas, but they, but see the white man, he's so crafty, they making it go away. They say, ain't no way in the world we going to publicize that the greatest movie in the late 20th century, a sci-fi movie, was written by a black woman, but she won the case. What happened was, they was going to take the case from her, and when she went to the dam, they was getting ready, they was going, they was going to have it thrown out. They was gonna have it thrown out. So, they was already in court to have it thrown out, 
and the damn FBI showed up. And the FBI was like, uh, we did an independent investigation too. And she didn't even know nothing about it. Say, we did an independent investigation, and she got enough damn evidence to go to court. And she went to court and won that motherfucker, but they're keeping it, they gotta pay her millions. She wrote, she wrote, she wrote the first mic matrix. You could tell because the first matrix was a ending, a beginning and ending the whole movie. They didn't have to do a second one. And for some reason, the second ones, they always fell a little short. And the third one was a disappointment. That's because they, the original people was not writing it and stuff. That's for me. Well, golly. Yeah, I need to get a house full of y'all sisters, man. Mm. One for every day. Every day. Here, give me a little more. Shoot. I get up in there and y'all have me chained up under the refrigerator. Mm-hmm. The sniper business was about um, two things. Number one, they want to kill the the guy, Ken Bridges, Ken Bridges. and um, <laughs> want to kill him. And all, and they just see when they do a, a hit like that, they put several things in. So they can sit down and plan something, and they say, we're going to do this, we're going to do this. With it. The other one was is in order to put a new face on terrorism, mm -hmm. the white man in this country was the only mass murderer. So in order to put a new face on terrorism, they had to do that. You know, the same guy who shot Collett 10 years ago out at the college is the guy who trained John Muhammad, who was financed by the Jews. John Muhammad was a government agent. See, what happened when they arrest these people? They go off to a secluded place, and you never see them again, and they be in a resort area. Saddam Hussein is there, and all the people they arrest, because they do a job well done, they get rewarded. So you don't know what this, 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 you, they just go away, and you don't ever hear about them no more. Like Noriega, what happened? What happened to the trial? What happened, what you call it? They just disappear. You see what I'm saying? Now, they can execute whoever. They can have a baloney man or a Michelin man or anybody they put up in that damn chair. Some dead motherfucker. You know what I'm saying? Could be goddamn uh, Ernest Goes to Africa or whoever they put up in there and all. It don't matter. But, um, but uh, what it is is, is um, they had already made the movie a year before, Liberty Stand Still with Wesley Snipes playing the sniper in D.C., same gun and everything. So it was all a setup and to make fear and to bring a new face. Now they, now look, oh, come on now. They said that this man was riding around in a blue car shooting somebody from the back of a damn trunk with a hole this big. And we supposed to believe that shit. You see what I'm saying? With a hole that big. It's all, it was all, the guy who, the homeless shelter that was staying in, he called the FBI on They said, why'd you call the FBI? He said, I thought it very odd that this guy could be staying in this homeless shelter with me in my homeless shelter, but he could get on a plane and fly out anywhere in the country he wanted to. It was a government agent. Um, the little boy, they said he was eating, they said the reason why he was eating honey and crackers, because when you got people under mind control, you got to give them the same food. Because if any new food would break the mind control. That's why the chicken place is in all the black community. You know what I'm saying? You don't eat East Indian food. You see what I'm saying? I'm, I'm just saying, major, you know, you don't eat certain exotic cuisine. You got used to Chinese food, which is not really Chinese food. The Asians don't eat that. That's Bruce Leroy's. <laughs> you eating Bruce Leroy's, and I went to an Asian place to eat the ones where, where ain't nothing in there but Asians and you. And I thought, I said, what is this shit? It tastes like some shit from another planet. The greens and the stuff was like, was almost like chewing gum. It was so salt. And I never tasted nothing like that since. And it wasn't up in there. A white man said, he said, we go to this Asian place where only the Asians eat. We want to send you by here. Here go the card. And the four years, uh, ten years ago, and me and Ginger went, and we was the only motherfuckers, it was all Asian. And I've never tasted that food again. So all that shit they give you is Bruce Leroy's. But you don't eat exotic foods. 
So the mind control still sticks in the community because the chicken and whatever they got in the fish and all the other shit. And you know what I'm tired? You know I'm I'm tired of. I'ma say it because y'all might not have the guts. Ain't y'all tired of fucking soul food? I'm talking about I know y'all all vegetarian, but goddamn. <laughs> and the first thing to do, I'm from the South, and somebody will come up and say, uh, let's go to eat. And I'm, I fly in to Milwaukee. I fly into Detroit. And they'll go, let's go eat. And, I, and they take me by. I'm like, I don't want to ever see no more soul food as long as I live. I'm so tired of candied yams and all that old yang shit. Because, it, because if your mind expands, you don't supposed to go home. You ever heard you never? You can never go home. You see what I'm saying? So right now, she said, why you don't eat no cereal? I said, because my mama was a goddamn school teacher. And she had to go to damn school. And my mama said, here go the motherfucking cereal in the milk. And from damn first grade to damn 12th, that's all I ate. So you can't give me no, you can't put a gun to my head to eat no damn cereal. Because I don't want nothing to remind me of where I came from. Because that's why, you, that's why we get stuck. We don't want to try nothing new. And so it's indicative. You find a motherfucker with a fucked up mentality and pathologies, a ghetto, and you try to feed them something and they start slowing down and they start picking over the food because they, and it, cause it's something new. And we're programmed not to take nothing new. So what happened was he was feeding him the honey and cracker because he was under mind control. Now the white man said, that it's ludicrous to say that the little boy was under mind control. Well, isn't it funny how they set the criteria? I do believe that they had a rich cracker girl 30 years ago that they got her in the motherfucking bank with the machine gun, shooting it or whatever. They got her own pictures. They, they allege that this boy is, 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 is guilty. They got Patty Hearst in there with this machine gun, and I do believe 30 years ago she got off on mind control shit. Aww. So wait a minute, you gonna tell me 30 years ago you let this cracker go and you got a picture of this motherfucking hoe with a damn machine gun and her damn shit, and all it was is she got a hold of some big dick and she damn went crazy. And yet, this boy here is a child that wasn't even grown yet. He wasn't even 18. He was a minor. And he, oh no, he can't be mind control. But here go a big old grown, molded, mildewed, rusty ass woman. <laughs> Rheumatism ass white woman. But yet it was mind control damn near 30 years ago. See, you see how that cracker do shit? So, so, so that whole thing was a government thing. You know, yeah, what's that? Mm hmm. Okay, so. Yeah, okay. Unless somebody got a real important question on that. Yeah. What's that? Uh huh. Last question is on the movie that we just talked about, um, The Matrix. What is the coincidence level that both of the black women who played the Oracle died? The one that played the. The, one she, the other one died recently? The other one died too. Both of them died. When did she die? Recently? Yeah, it's on the, uh, when you get the, the uh, disc for the last Matrix and they show you how they put it all together, they... It, she died also. She also died. She was a veteran actress. She, both of them were veteran actors. Both of them... Uh, both of them came from Broadway and they both did two years on the same play together. And, and if you look at uh, Leonard Part 6, the first Oracle is the, is the villain in Leonard Part 6. She also was in a movie in 1971 with Harry Belafonte. He was a ghost. He got hit by a car, and she was his girlfriend in the movie, and he was uh, living with this Jewish family or whatever. So, it, yeah, you're right. It's all a ritual and stuff. And you know Aaliyah was supposed to play that part also okay. that they gave to Jada Pinkett. And it's interesting here, you know Will Pinkett, he's trying to do all I, Robot. Here go the biggest idiot ever lived. They gave him the role of Neil, and he turned it down. I mean, he didn't want to do no sci-fi, and, and you know what he did instead? The Wild Wild West. He played iRobot, and Denzel Washington played a man on fire. Both of them had conflicts because they were trying to save the little white people. Right, and not on that, but, but now, the iRobot, they showed Homeland Security locked down America. Now, go get Santa Claus, too. Santa Claus 2 dropped hard. First of all, they had Mother Nature up and there was a black woman. And, when she, and they told him he had to get married. He was going to lose all his powers. And Mother Nature married him. And she said, by the powers vested in me, by me. Mm. 
black woman in there. But in the movie, he came down to earth to find his wife, and they had a clone of him up there, and the clone put everybody in Santa Claus land in the North Pole under goddamn Homeland Security. Had them on lockdown. Had the damn toy soldiers locking them down. It was a bad, it was a bad piece. Santa Claus too. The first one dropped, this one here, and they had Mother Nature up in there, and she got, she married him. By the powers vested in me, by me. But when he was away, his clone put no pole on the dog on Homeland Security. On, on, the, on, the, on the Homeland Security. It's a mother. But you see. Tell them about um, Arnold Schwarzenegger and Billy Clinton. Uh, which one? What, there's so much on him. Yeah, well, I mean, sure, because there's not that much time left. Uh, about. Um, January the 6th, it'll be 100 days since his birthday, the Olympics. And oh, yeah. Well. And the yeah, they, when they're trying to groom him, they're getting ready to pass this thing that, that a foreigner can be president. So that he can be the global president. And the man said he admired Nazism, the Gropinator, the Governator. And um, uh, so, you know, he was running for that role for 20 something years. You see, and for 20 something years. And he really don't have to do nothing. He probably sitting in the back room watching TV like Reagan because it ain't about no governing. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And Arnold, Arnold is an anagram of Ronald. Okay, Ronald. That the son, he, Arnold's supposed to be Horace and Reagan was supposed to be the son. And you know, they did a whole ritual on Reagan and it would have went through, but Ray Charles died and busted up that energy. Yeah. You see what I'm saying? But, uh, you know, because Reagan got these crackers to, believe, to, to, you know, say, hey, white supremacy is good. You know, they was about shot up after the 70s, but, you know, and they burned them, and they were rebelling. They burned, they burned 50,000 disco albums on a football field, and, and Nile Rogers from Sheik said, now, come on. He said that this disco was a black format. They might have changed it for their shit, but the basic of dance music was black. He said it was a black format, and it was mean-spirited. You see what I'm saying? So, and really, come to find out the history of disco was, in the 1970s, Motown got together and said, we're going to extend the music and make us a, a longer dance music. And the first disco song was Keep On Trucking. Eddie Kendrick's Eddie 1973, then Boogie Down Baby the next year. And then the white boys came in and copied the format and started doing some stuff and made like the disco was what's called. It was the new Motown sound and stuff. I, I, I always thought disco was the 4-4. Four, four. That, that, that introduced a 4-4 four, four format um, musical meter to the something that white people could listen to instead of... Uh, no, what happened, see, no, what, what really got them to do it was that goddamn Van McCoy. He did that hustle, and he made it, he made it so that them crackers could dance. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> see, they do that every year. Louis Prima did it in the 50s. It was all rock and roll, and Louis, Louis Prima came up, and they could dance to that Louis. You know Louis Prima. I'm just a gigolo, and... Oh, you know all that, dun, 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 dun. and he Louis Prima did it in the fifties. Chubby Checker coming back that shit up. They do it every so many, so often. And Van McCoy did that hustle. You see what I'm saying and all. But so they could dance to it. But it's still, if you literally look at it, it's still a black format. It's it's not as if it came. In order for it to be invented by them, you have to take something that predates it and say, well, we can see the origin of the disco coming out of that. You can see the origin, and actually they took. A cross between the Eddie Kendrick's Boogie Down Baby, um, Keep On Trucking, and Dog on Cool in the Gang, Jungle Boogie, it's called Get, because half the song was Get Down a Boogie. So Cool in the Gang wrote a song called Jungle Boogie where they said Get Down, Get Down, and they took that stuff and made the origins of it, but it's still a black format. It's, it, it, was, it was still a black format, because even in order to launch it off on a high level, they had to get Donna Summer. She's the queen of it. And that Love to Love You Baby got a whole, if you get the album, that's a whole side. You want to do some real, serious, bumping and grinding on a spiritual, get that, the, 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 the CD, with the, the original one from 75, is a whole 20 minutes. That's all most niggas got up in them is 20 damn minutes. <laughs> <laughs> so that should be par for the course. Huh? George <laughs> Right. Giorgio Moroto, who was German, and what he did is, is he just took that shit and put it in the little uh, synthesizer thing and, and all this kind of thing here, but it's still a black format. It's not as if it came from country 
or some other type of beat. It was a black format. They just made it into a level, but it was always a black format because Sheik and all them came back and made that shit back black. You see what I'm saying and all that kind of thing here. But the first song to come out where they copied, see, the Eddie Kendrick's Keep On Trucking Baby came out too early. Disco didn't even be, they, they didn't even start dealing with it until late 75, 76, and on into 77. Keep On Trucking came out in 73. And it's an extended version. You see, then he came down with Boogie Down Baby. They just were stealing shit there because the origin of that. The reason why I say that, because the Cracker came on TV when they had this disco thing they had on a PBS a last two, three weeks ago. He came on and said that the Bee Gees are the architects of contemporary music. I said, well, 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 first of all, the Bee Gees didn't come, they didn't hit until, until the damn um, movie. So I'm not lying, 1977, they came out with Jive talking in 75, and, no, and it didn't even sell. Right. So even if you try to make that argument, there was white boys. Hell, KC came out right. in 75, but KC had an all-black band behind him. Right. And even if you went to the Bee Gees or KC and the Sunshine Band, they would never say that because even on the k tail record label, the people, the, the song, the disco song that came out before them was Rock Me Baby. What's your boy name? Rock Me Baby. Got to get it on the camera. Um, Rock Your Baby. George McCray. It's on his album, he got 11 minutes. It's still a disco song, 1975, and 1974, as well as Rock the Boat, Hughes Corporation. They were stealing shit. White boy Dennis Coffey with the guitar to bring in Scorpio. Yeah, yeah, but see, all. Oh, <laughs> yeah, but they, the well, reason why they used him because he, but but he was, but no, he was just, they used him because he was an excellent wah wah man. There you go. That's good. And so he was just basically, so they can use, see, musicians always use whatever talent they could get to produce a sound. He was just an excellent wah wah man. But still, yeah, that's all that shit was black. You know, they just had a cracker up in there that, you know, every now and then you get one that can swing. Just like the Winter Brothers, the one who was albino. Uh huh. Yeah, so yeah, all that stuff you see is, is our, uh, you know, our stuff and all, you know. And they copying, and I went in the store and I said, I'm trying to find damn razor blade. And every nigga I said, they say, razor blade. And the white boy said, What's the name of it? It's, it's a, anybody know the song Razor Blade came out in 72? Um, the guy name is, um, he was, they say he was James Brown's brother. Um, King something. Not King Curtis. Um, something Royal. Little Royal. It's a song called Razor Blade by Little Royal. If you hear it, it's, it's bad. It's, anyway, uh, I couldn't find a white boy told me what it was. And uh, Little Royal is the name. Just go look it up and try to find it. And, uh, it's hard to find. But all I'm trying to say here is, the reason why I brought that up is because even there they tried to steal something, and it still ain't theirs. Even when you research whatever they tried to turn it into, the origin of the shit is still black. You know, the origin of it is still black. It's just like they couldn't steal. Rock and roll was a slang, a black person slang for bumping and grinding. So in order for them to make rock and roll a white phenomenon, phenomenon they had to drop the roll. And rock overnight became a white people's music. And all the thing they did was, is we can say they can say what they want, nobody has ever done anything with that guitar like that until Jimi Hendrix. Give it up. That's, 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 and so whatever. Not Chuck Berry. Huh? No, but I'm talking about, Chuck Berry was, 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 no, Jimi Hendrix, I'm talking about to the level of where you would have rock and roll today. It's basically the start of Jimi Hendrix. The genre. The genre where you would have it and stuff, it was the start. And it's the start of Jimi Hendrix. You see what I'm saying? On that particular level. His ass. And, and all, you know, his ass and stuff. You see what I'm saying? <laughs> and he, he couldn't damn hold Jimi Hendrix guitar pedal. You see, oh, you know, that crazy stuff, you see. And, and all, so that's, that's all good. Any other questions? Well. Oh, personal question. Oh, you got personal question. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. 
Yeah, we, so we got the trip to Hemet Love Fund. You can still come up. And, and you have an opportunity to, to, we won't discriminate against you. You can still give. We will allow that. As well as, um, as well as um, the, uh, you can get the actual pictures. Now, who brought, put the check up in here? Uh -oh. <laughs> who put the check up in here? That's like Confederate money to me. I can't do shit with this. Hmm? Yeah. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, cool, brother. Oh, yeah, man. Yeah. So you can give to the Love Fund. We still got DVDs. We still got the pictures. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, saw, I was looking at that back there. 